can tell us how we're doing. We can kind of look at that. There we go. All right, I like this. Yeah. This is a nice little set. Different. Huh? You, go, you can it. actually come up a little bit more. Yeah, get a little, get, get in my stuff. A little tiny. Yeah, get it, get him. Oh, he's trying to show. Oh, okay. Uh, here, here. Yeah. Yeah. He's a guy. <laughs> I like it. We're in. All right, cool. Huh. Welcome to our new Stoa. You yeah. Stoa. Our new secured Stoa. A different Stoa. We spent of like sorts. the better part of five hours. Yeah. We're going right. away at a door. <laughs> uh, one got, helped. Yeah, one got to sit in uh, videotape. Yeah. <laughs> While we sat there work on our door, uh, that's going to be an upcoming. Uh, well, actually, this, this is the beginning of secure your physical stoa, your physical security. And we don't mean physical like these guns. Yeah, like physical as in physical things. But uh, this is now the second parter. We did physical, or we did financial Finances. first, and now we're going to be into physical security. Uh, we're going to couple couple different topics uh, under that, and then we're going to look into uh, just some things that we kind of find important to touch on and talk about, especially now in today's society. It's a little different back in, what, 2,000 years ago when they were talking about this. They were more worried about, uh, what, like, I guess not Mongols or somebody coming over the hilltop. <laughs> uh, and, it's, you know, some, some things are universal the same and some uh, kind of don't change. Uh, but uh, we also have Juan. We brought Juan again. He's another uh, Arikwara's homie, as mm-hmm. the now a Stoic bro, along with us. And then, of course, it's uh, Bill and I. We're blending Juan into the Stoic. Yeah. Yes. Can He's you slowly me? sneaking my way in. So, um, first kind of bullet point, and we, we just started with this, that I, we ended up messing with my door, and we're going to do a cool little review on uh, the door. I think the messing door with. devil or something? Messing with. It was a really... I would advise not do it unless you're pretty handy. <laughs> Uh, but uh, is your residence and residence? I'm gonna use this as a pretty broad term. This could be apartment. This could be condo. This could be your dorm room. Or again, for me, it's, it's my house. But um, or if you live in your car. Yeah. Or like he said, even if you're living in your car, it's just, it's just where you're going to keep your belongings. Where you're gonna put your head down at night. Uh, this could be a campsite, for all you know. Uh, but that it's an important shelter is one of the first things that you talk about in a survival situation that you kind of want to secure. Um, as far as securing it. And um, I think that all kind of starts on, like, where. Um, I know I've lived from apartments, really terrible apartments, all the way up to pretty nice, like, in my parents' neighborhood, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, but that... Pretty nice. You know, yeah. I live on a golf course. Um, not on physically on the golf course. But they have a golf course. They, they, don't they yeah. overlook the they golf do. course? Their backyard looks so they, onto the golf course. They're yeah. bougier than I am. But my parents the saltwater pool. pool. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But, uh, no uh, pool, though. Yeah, I think the first thing is, like, definitely, like, how how close are you relative to, like, uh, necessities? You can think about, like, you know, grocery stores. You can think about, you know, what... What's that noise? Well, something outside. Something outside. Well, how's weirding me out? My soul feels insecure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, no, like, like your amenities and then also, like, your support system. So, like, uh, again, when Juan and I grew up, heck, we were less than a mile or two away from each other. And that, uh, not just if it's like a crazy, a lot of people will say like shit hit the fan situation, but just like personal crisis or my car goes down or something like that. Having an infrastructure, again, we're relatively, we live pretty close to one another, but it's, it's easier to rely on people or to rely on resources, whether it be city, you can talk about like fire and PD and EMS, uh, but also again, simple stuff. Hey, I needed a hardware store. All of this stuff should kind of go into where you're kind of placing that residence. And obviously, if you have kids, I think you can kind of think about school, school yeah, systems and school stuff systems. like that, after school stuff, libraries. Parks. Uh, oh, parks is a huge... Well, and that's like the best possible thing you could do for yourself at times, and then like true crime series, the worst possible <laughs> thing you could do for yourself. Uh, but all of that, like I said, and again, uh, kind of the community at large and whether or not their values kind of line up with your own. And I'm not talking about just like political... Or ideologically, but like from a safety standpoint, um, I, I know. And uh, again, in the jobs that you, we we have, uh, I've been to Section Eight housing that everyone knew who each other were, yeah. everyone cared. Uh, you didn't see everyone kind of picked up after themselves, and uh, would quite frankly, snitch if something bad was going down, because they all it happened co- a lot. Yeah, well, because they, they all kind of collectively cared about one another. And you, uh, Juan, and I actually grew up. Uh, at a pretty tight knit raw mm-hmm. it was pretty cool man we grew up there but. yeah yeah pretty nice pretty safe very uh small town feel mm-hmm. you know Back lots then. of people yeah i mean still right now it's more more people complaining that you know there's new stuff coming in and they don't like it but 
Uh, you still see a lot of it on the Facebook groups and the next door groups. People talk to each other. People know each other. People know what's going on. They're very in tune with what's going on. They want to know. They ask each other. So, you know, it makes a difference. You can make a safer community or it can make a less safe community depending on uh, the type of people that, that you have and what they're interested in looking for. So I want to hit on safety, security, and all of that. Because when I moved down here from Michigan, I had no way to it's your feel adventure. out a community. Yeah. Okay. I got lucky that I moved into like a year old apartment complex that was right by the store that I was working at at the time. And there was like nothing else up there. It was up in Keller. So I got very lucky doing that. But now transitioning to the career that we're in, I think it's funny that when you look at like apartment listings or even home listings on Dude. MLS, they look so nice. And I'm going to give you probably the biggest piece of advice that I could ever give someone. Go drive around at night. Go okay. drive around wherever you're looking at living at night and just be very aware of what's going on around you. So when I started looking for a house, I was looking on MLS and I found probably like seven houses that I liked. And then you get out there to the actual location and it is nothing like the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Nothing at all. And before that, I was living in apartments and whatnot. And I made the mistake one time of a certain apartment complex that I lived in. And it was like, you know, I went, I looked at the apartment, the manager showed me around, it looked great. And then my first night there, there was probably a murder. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but there were some loud noises, there was some yelling, there were some cars taken off, and then the cops showed up. So it was like, I made kind of a mistake by just getting sucked into that, oh, this one apartment is so nice, like, I can't believe it's so cheap, like, look, I got wood <laughs> floors and granite countertops, and I'm not paying nothing per month, yeah. so my biggest piece of advice, and I just told this to some friends that moved, and he sent me the apartments he was looking at, and I could just tell from the street that they were on how terrible they were, no. <laughs> but the pictures of these apartments were so nice, like, so, I, I, I want to give, like, and this is probably the worst, like, business plug ever, do not trust really good production companies that make really good pictures. Like, they, they're incredibly good at their job. Yeah. I, like, shout out to anybody that needs those kind of services, but, like... It is my job to make those houses look like they're in very nice neighborhoods. I am. I do real estate photography, and let me tell you, go on. if you don't feel safe driving around there, go on Google Earth and just look at the cars that are parked in the, in the driveways. Right. That's, 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 yeah. That's the easiest tell. Yeah. Easy, easy tell. You know exactly what kind of neighborhood you're looking at. Yeah. Because half the time, these are houses that are like, they're, they're three bedroom, two bath. They look great in these pictures. I know, because that, that's my job. That's what I do. Um, they're teeny tiny. I mean, they're, they're teeny tiny. You, you go to the place that looks like a shed. Uh, all the, Half the cars don't have tires on them. I mean, it's it's... Definitely, definitely do your research on that end. Um, yeah, you well, don't also, necessarily trust the Zillow, the Zillow thing. Or crime stats are so easy to find. Yes, yeah, I will say that you, yeah. you find the city and the area, and mm -hmm. you know, as it um, one of the a lot of these real estate you know websites that you're looking at these houses will have the crime stats on there. You can see, and the nice, the great thing to look at too is not just how much crime, but what type of crime. Yeah. Because you can, there, there's, a, there's a big difference between like, oh, there's the casual car break-in, which will happen, you know, and there's certain parts, Dallas is weird like this, in that a lot of the, the best neighborhoods are next to some of the absolute worst neighborhoods. And so there's sometimes some spillover where people will go and they'll break into a car and they'll steal a stereo or whatever. Um, but that doesn't mean that's a bad neighborhood. That just means it's something to be aware of. Yeah. Um, but if you're seeing domestic violence, if you're seeing, you know, murders felonies. obviously yeah. if you're seeing felonies yeah. burglaries stay away yeah. yeah if you're seeing houses being broken into don't be there a car you can put in your garage if they're breaking into the garage that's a different story well, and and again this isn't to sit there and say everybody's economic situation is different obviously my, my i'm imploring you to sit there to to prioritize where you're placing this residence and and i would afford the safest place you can uh, i can't afford to live behind huge walls 
uh, in the middle of nowhere with armed security 24-7. I can't afford that. I'm I not, wish we could. I'm not, I'm not an affluent <laughs> you know, politician or anything like that. So I can't, I can't afford any of that stuff. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, if you buy our merch. We'll yeah, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, support the channel. Here's where we plug everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button. Support the channel. <laughs> Share with your friends. Uh, but uh, get but, us some walls. <laughs> yeah, please. But the uh, we'll let you in. We promise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just need to. I just need you to show me that. The background check. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's and we'll kind of get into once you find the safest place you can afford comfortably. What you can do after that. Because, again, there's people that live uh, in those super ritzy neighborhoods that still have, again, crime finds you. Uh, ultimately, you're going to go find where, where if I'm a criminal, I'm going to go look at the easiest, highest payout I can for the least amount of money. Uh, we're, and we're, you may be promoting that without even knowing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, even with this video, someone's going to look, ooh, uh, how are they securing their stores? Uh, it, it's ultimately, it, it, in a weird way, uh, a kind of a weird arms race between people that are trying to secure something and then people that are trying to take it. Um, and we're just putting this information out there because I think that this foundationally has a lot to do with this is how you build yourself. This is how you build your relationships, whether it be with your friends or your family. It starts off with that physical residence. So from there, everything is kind of like your foundation for everything else. And it's kind of why we looked at this idea of physical security. Um, some of the stuff you can do, I guess, once you've picked it, again, even if, if it's a cabin in the woods, start looking at actually, we call it target hardening in the business. But uh, you want to make yourself either the least appealing or at least give yourself the most false fail-safes uh, if someone's coming in. If, if someone's going to pick your residence or your you know situation, how do you make that... Uh, unappealing and the biggest thing is creating accountability i love 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 i have a ring camera set up at my house a lot of people that are, it's the cheapest easiest one to do we'll probably do a review on one of these uh units just for you guys to kind of see our experience on it but the biggest thing is you will not commit a crime here without me knowing about it it's not what's well, one thing to throw uh you know a rock through a window jump in there and all they have is a rock thrown through a window i'm at least going to have video of you I might even get a good description of you. I'm going to have a time frame for it. And then I can allow the authorities uh, to kind of act on that. Or at the very minimum, a lot of times I can see you in the act and like yell at you through the phone or whatever. Or if I'm inside, I'm more situationally aware. I know that you're coming to my house at the sidewalk, not once you're already kind of kicking in my door. Um, I think that's a huge leg up. Like I said, as, if you're going to get victimized no matter what, at least you have some sort of recourse so that you have something there. Or... Again, we did an entire thing where I basically made my door, for better or not, kick-proof. Um, that you, there's a lot of people that have good videos about putting rose bushes near your windows. Uh, if you want to go as far, and it's one of the things that I always talk about. If you want to judge a neighborhood, how many people have wrought iron gates over every yeah, single yeah. opening? Uh, it's very secure, but it's kind of telling that that they chose to prioritize that because they believe in their situation. They have a high propensity of possibly having someone try to force entry into their home. Um, that's something that you can also look at. Uh, the other thing, and I'll, I'll let you speak. I have both of you guys. I have a cat. Yeah. That's my cat <laughs> basically takes up space and poops mm -hmm. in my house. So uh, I'll let them kind of talk. I grew up with these invaluable assets, but I'll let them kind of talk about. Yeah. Uh, the The... Other, probably a little more expensive than a ring doorbell, but it's still pretty low on the expense side, and it's very valuable, is a dog. A dog is the best value for the money yep. that you can get in terms of protecting mm -hmm. your stoa. Uh, because, basically, no, it, it makes criminals kind of just turn around. They're going to go pick an easier spot. Um, and a dog, really, you know, you feed it, you walk it, mm -hmm. you know, most of it is a... Is a Time be, investment. Be, be a responsible dog. A responsible I'm not just saying just buy one for fun. Don't just buy you know, a dog yeah. and don't just make it mean. Yeah. No, but I'm talking like we had, you know, Sc Scottish Terriers growing up, and these are they're like this big, they're like 20 pounds, 20 pound dogs, but they have a pit bull bark, and they do have a pretty damn what, strong bite because yeah. they're you know they're little hunting dogs, but they're they're tough little dogs. But let's be real, somebody could just kick them out the way, and whatever. But as soon as anybody stepped up to our door and heard them barking, they would take like eight steps back and mm -hmm. be like, whoa, what's in there? You know, mailmen, delivery guys, anybody, friends, when they would come in and be like, oh, what's <laughs> yeah, that? It's, like, wanna, yeah, it's our super friendly, you know, little tiny dogs that are very, very angry that anybody dares to step on their stoa. So um, 
it makes a big difference. And uh, I'll let you just kind of get into it from the, the hey, industry your dogs standpoint. Are super <laughs> yeah. Precious, so but I've yeah, taken it a little bit further than both of them because not only do I have a ring camera, I have three cameras on the exterior of my house and three like stupid bright oh, LED motion lights. sensor LED lights. I was about to, I didn't so if you about walk lights, up to yeah. the front of my house at night, good luck hiding anywhere because it literally looks like a prison yard shooting out light to the street and then i have cameras on both corners my ring doorbell and on the back and i also just installed a six foot wooden fence around my whole backyard besides the crappy chain link fence we might also do a fence building video came to be a lot uh, more stressful yeah (laughs) Yeah. fence building i will not be there for that i uh, I don't want to do it (laughs) on the dog topic i went a little crazy and got two giant dogs they're so nice one, they're very yeah, vicious but, yeah. they're horribly vicious dogs. They're horrible. They're horrible. They're horrible. They're if you hear maggie oh, bark my goodness you think it's yeah. a 200 pound wolf behind the door yeah she's a 90 pound chocolate lab mastiff that just wants to lick your face off i might but, set the dogs yeah and, and but good luck getting into my house without me knowing it yeah um, oh, and even if you're away from the house, the whole, and, and really like... Oh yeah, they don't mm-hmm. care. Like, they don't want you anywhere near their house. They, if they hear a car door close on the street, their ears perk up yeah, and they're ready yeah. to go. So, whether or not they're vicious and they're they're not, you know, trained Malinois or mm-hmm. German Shepherds, but they don't regardless, good luck, because not only do you have to open a storm door to get to my house... I just installed metal doors on my house also. So try coming through those and then you get to meet my dogs. And if, even if you just live in a regular house too, I mean, the whole point is to make your house less appealing mm-hmm. than, unfortunately, your neighbor's house. Yes. You know? yeah, and if yeah. you are a person who is looking for the easiest score, where are you going to go? You know, are you going to go to the place where you might get bitten? You know, where you might, you might have to fight off a... a 200 pound whatever yeah, yeah. hell yeah. no you're gonna go to the house and, and you're gonna has... risk it yeah you're it not doesn't matter what it. the bark sounds like are yeah. you gonna risk going yeah in for the well because like i don't want to get bitten by a chihuahua either they're little devils that's the word there's demons they're yeah. demons and they have very sharp little pointy teeth that hurt so no you want you're gonna go to the house that has no dogs that has no floodlights that has no nothing um that's still likely to have a tv and it's still likely to have a laptop and it's still likely to have a couple phones laying around what and again, kind of back to the whole residence idea, if an entire community is set up with people, you just have like this huge network of dogs. Mm-hmm. I always giggle when we're like looking for people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody's jumping backyard fences and you can literally sometimes just follow dog barks. Yep. You'll hear the one pissed off, oh, he's going that way. And yep. you'll hear it and it's quite literally, there's an immediate deterrent. They go right into that yard and right out of it. <laughs> uh, because, it, and again, it, it, it's not... People that are looking to victimize others, they want anonymity. They don't want consequences. If they wanted consequences, they'd do it and go get caught. Mm-hmm. You know, if they wanted to be uh, famous for doing it, they'd be Facebook live in it while they did it. And that's, that's not what people want. Some people do that, though. Some people, Some people yeah. Do that. Facebook live yeah. stealing cars. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding. So the one thing that I think is interesting, and you were talking about it while we were working on your door... Carjacking you, prank you video. Told your home builder that you did not want a door with windows. Yeah. And I don't think enough people think about that. Because how many houses do we go and we'll knock on the door and they have that the big you know the windows four on the inch side. windows yeah. on the side and then the big window like on the front of their door. And yeah, it's great if you want to like peek the blinds over <laughs> and look out, the, look out the window. But guess how easy it is? To punch through that little piece of glass and just unlock your door and yeah. then open all, right up. All of the work I just did in trying to install kick plates and extra dead bolts and all that. It would have been for nothing. For not, if, if I had, had just windows. a simple... Someone yeah. would have to climb a good eight... They'd have to have a ladder to break in through probably a plate glass window yeah, yeah, above my gonna, door. That's probably a double pane. Yeah, and it's a good luck. Window. Uh, again, I just made it less appealing. And then they'd have to climb through because it's a half circle. Yeah. So you'd have and to you climb to through skinny. and then jump down. I would not fit through that door. Just not. <laughs> I trade my dogs and yeah. my gosh, so. Yeah. so there you go. He, yeah. he, it's, I, I can aff- he can afford the windows <laughs> because he's got... Because my dogs know jujitsu and they're UFC fighters. And also, while we're on the topic of windows... Don't leave your blinds open. Yes. Don't let people walk up to your house and look inside and see the nice 85-inch yeah. Samsung TV you have sitting in your living room begging them to come steal it. 
Lines are amazing. So are curtains. Well, and, and I think part of this, and weirdly enough, is ties into like you a... You secure your electrical bill, too. Yeah, exactly. That exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that there's, you know, uh, it, it's good to have, I think, everyone's goal in life in some way, shape, or form is to better themselves and to accumulate some level of financial security. Mm-hmm. Uh, having it and flaunting it are two very different things. It's, it's appropriate to flaunt your very nice car at a car show. You probably don't want to do it in your front yard. Uh, you know, and again, if you live in a place where maybe you can afford that because you have a physical dog sitting there staring at your car all day, fine. But again, just understand that, that the more you want to flaunt said wealth, the more you're probably going to have to pay for either insurance for when someone does mess with it or, again, security if you want to protect it. So, Just like that, be smart about what you throw out on trash day. Yes. It does not take that much to take a box cutter and break down mm-hmm. the box for your nice new TV. And it sounds silly, but people look at these things. People yeah. drive around neighborhoods trying to find the easiest target. And you probably don't even notice that they've driven around your house seven times already. Mm-hmm. Um, one big one now that we just talked about vehicles is, is, and again, if this just happens to be your residence and your mode of transportation, uh, but your vehicle is the one thing outside of your house you're probably going to spend the most time in. Uh, you're going to go into transitional spaces. You're going out to eat with your friends. These two guys had to drive to my house. Uh, you're going to eventually put valuables inside of that. Uh, find a good way to secure them. My mom used to be real big about if we bought something, we put it in the trunk. She did not want bags, whether it was from the mall or from whatever store we we're going to. She literally would keep a jacket that she would cover bags in because she was nobody was ever going to want to break into. I covered my ammo that day we bought. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you did. Yeah, <laughs> he sat there and me. It, it, it just again, it kind of comes down to you're you're trying to limit the opportunities or your appeal to it. Um, but I think you know, lock your doors. Uh, a big one that please kinda, lock your doors. That kind of drives me up the wall is do not leave your car running with the keys in it if you're not in it. It sounds like it should be. You laugh, but it's it bad. no. I laugh because yeah, I know yeah. people who do that since yeah. it's gotten cold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. And again, I understand the value of warming your car up before you go. Warm up your car while you're sitting in it. Uh, people are a lot less likely to go take it from you that way. Well, I think a hundred dollar remote start. Mm-hmm. that you pay to get installed if your car doesn't have it is a lot cheaper than cheaper replacing your, your stolen. stolen vehicle. Yep. But that's just me. Yeah. And heck, my, my truck, I, I didn't even come with one. I have, I have an old truck. But if I wanted to, I could install one. But if exactly. I'm going to warm it up, I sit in the truck and I let it warm up. Yes. Have five extra minutes, you know, to go get it. Um, try to be kind of careful. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of go into situational awareness. I'm going to lump two talking points that we kind of have uh one's going to be setting firm boundaries and the other one's going to be situational awareness um situational awareness is the best way i can try to i guess put this in layman's terms is understanding the situation that you're in and how to act or or uh, i guess protect yourself so if i'm you know in my house uh behind three locked doors with my dog next to me, I'm probably not going to be in a hyper set of awareness unless I'm watching a scary movie. I'm like, what's that? What's that noise? What's this person? Like that, you did uh, yeah. when the video started. Exactly. Yeah. What's what is that, that noise? noise? Yeah. Uh, there's no real reason for it. I, I mean, I'm stressing my out kind of. For, I'm stressing myself out for kind of a good reason. Uh, versus, if I'm in an unfamiliar place, uh, I'm starting to see some red flags. You know, there's people looking at my car when I'm parked. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm starting to feel uh, like I'm like somebody's following me while I'm driving and stuff like that. My situational awareness should go up in that sense that I'm paying more attention to what's around me. You know how you would notice that someone is following you while you're driving hmm. by not texting. That's a huge one. Let's talk about this. Yeah, by not, not texting, TikToking. not TikToking and driving. By, by not eating. Yeah. By not reading. None of this. By not yeah. doing your makeup and hair. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, mm-hmm. driving was <sighs> supposed to be driving not multitasking Mm -hmm. but in and i don't even want to say it from like a for you to be safe standpoint what is it like two hundred thousand people a year like die in motor vehicle accidents i think that's probably on the low end yeah but 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 like i mean texas alone usually has four thousand you are hurtling through space time going 80 miles per hour which your body has no business going you know it's just we weren't designed to go that fast uh, and in any one second, you do this to this human well, you die. Mm-hmm. Or at least are severely maimed. Or you don't see that. that stalled vehicle ahead of you on the highway. Yep. 
because you're busy looking at your phone um, and you think that your uh, collision avoidance is going to stop you. Yeah. Well, we can attest that it's not yeah. going to. It doesn't work that Especially because you're too poor to have a car with that. I'm just saying. I'm that too poor. Too. My truck doesn't have that. <laughs> my, my, my collision avoidance is right here and right here. Well, I'm so, just saying we yeah. have cars now that For supposedly sure. drive themselves. Yeah. So yeah. people are getting less and less yeah. aware of their surroundings while they're driving. Guess what your insides do when you hit something going 80 miles an hour? Yeah. I don't I care going. if you have your seatbelt on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this thing called inertia kicks in, and it's like, oh, wait, you're decelerating? But I don't feel like doing that. Oh, all your organs? Yeah, those are going to stop right here in the front of your body. Good luck with that. That's if they stop. They go squish. <laughs> That's, That's it. Yeah, I, I've, seen, I've seen accidents that happen fast enough that they go a lot worse than that. Uh, but it's just kind of like a be safe thing. Uh, you know, I and it's not to shame people that do that. It's not to. It's just I'm shaming it. Really, really think about the consequence. Again, it's 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 a cost benefit analysis. Mm-hmm. You know, if this tweet really is worth my life, it's fine. Knock it out. Whatever. I guess it's what I got insurance. I'm right with God. Whatever. It's my time. It's my time. <laughs> but for everyone else, <laughs> you know, for the rest of us. Could you not do it though? Like <laughs> yes, for me, please. so you don't hit me. Like I would appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and just I, tweet back at him. Quit tweeting. Quit. Stop it. I would just do a voice memo and be like, "Hey, remember to tweet that asshole that almost hit you." <laughs> in the future, we'll be able to add people that we just see. You know, <laughs> hey, at that person in that red Honda, yes. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Just these little LED signs that are on the front and back of the car, so you can oh, no. send message to cars. Oh, that that I couldn't yeah. have that. Yeah. No. I, yeah. I would get in trouble. Expensive from spilling, but don't turn it over because it's not that good. <laughs> so I'm keeping that. It's still pretty damn secure. See? <laughs> Secures the heat of your coffee. Oh, whoa, so, easy, easy. Baby Yoda cup, what? please sponsor easy. me. Thank you. So uh, we're back uh, with the Baby Yoda speech and the securing and almost getting spelled out. Um, it's secure? Yeah, it's secure. it is. It's secure. Um, one of the big things, in, in, and this will probably lump into some other stuff, but setting setting firm boundaries, physical boundaries. Um, we can talk this about. This is too close. Yeah, clearly we're kind of messing up the whole Rona space thing. Uh, we all know each other. We spend enough What's time. That? We're being responsible. Mm-hmm. I thought that was over. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we we we, we have vaccine. I got I got my vaccine the old fashioned way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the, I thought now that a certain something had been finalized, it's done. It's over. It's gone. It's gone. gone forever. It's poof. This is the end of quarantine. Yay. Uh, but again, uh, have w- if something makes you uncomfortable, act on it. Um, if you feel that someone's being inappropriate or if someone's being, again, violating said physical boundaries that you're having for yourself, whether it's someone being, uh, it's, I love you. It's okay. We're positive like that here. Mm-hmm. Uh, positive. Yeah, go, Demonetize. I'm going to, I'm going to bleep it. <laughs> um, we're not going to get our penny in three years. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, but a- a- act on it. Uh, do do not be too polite. Uh, someone, uh, I think my wife was telling me this, that uh, people are, are too pol- so polite that they would rather get murdered than be impolite. Like that's how crazy you got to think that somebody says, "Hey, go get in my car, or I'm going to kill you." Oh, okay, <laughs> you know, rather than do you know inconvenience this person with not doing what they want from me. Uh, that that I will, and you'd be amazed. It happens. Well, not even just be polite. If you can remove yourself from that situation, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Who cares about the other person? If so you're saying, uncomfortable, you leave. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it, is, it seems silly that I would lump this into a, a, a principle like courage, but it is that. You know, you're saying that I don't believe that what's going to happen here is either good for me or good for anybody else. If someone else victimizes you in some way, shape, or form, that is bad for them. Maybe they have one extra opportunity to rethink what they're doing. Uh, or, again, go to prison if they get caught for doing whatever it is they want to do. <laughs> but um, taking that step and saying that, hey... I'm going to be more in, in control of my physical security. You can talk about Krav Maga and all this kind of stuff, but most of this stuff is simply said by, hey, you're walking a little too close to me. You know, hey, you're driving too close to me. Hey, like, you know, back off. I can slow down, speed up, move. Um, somebody's lingering around my house too much. So I have, you know, somebody lingering around me too much. Um, having those boundaries, deciding what those boundaries are for you. And it's going to be different for different people. Again, Juan can go... He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, other people, perfect strangers that, you know, I'm a little le- more leery about. And that, that can adjust. Culturally, there's certain things that are different. Again, I'm a hugger. I hug everybody. Um, I, I remember I had in-laws that the first time they met me, they were like, whoa, man, Josh is real, real friendly, man. And it's, it's a cultural <laughs> thing. And sometimes you do have to adjust for that. 
or whether it be a polite or, like I said, it's public transportation or something like that, you're going to be sardines. There's nothing you can do about that. But if you can, try to set those boundaries and try to be firm about those uh, because those keep you safe. Um, you're kind of the same thing with your car and all that other stuff. You, you, well, like you said, you know, building up the exterior of your house is great, but not if you're letting people in that you don't know. Yeah. Like, you have to also have boundaries with who you let come to your house and who you let in your house and, like, how well you know these people. Yeah. You know, I would, I would guess that we probably deal with more people getting stuff stolen from their friends yep. than just strangers. Yeah, I and mean, it, it's it goes back to boundaries. You yeah. know, this person wants to be my friend, but does not mean I have to be friends <laughs> exactly. with this person. You know, yeah. um, there there was the uh, back when memes were good. Uh, was it the the Morpheus meme? Just because he's nice to you doesn't mean you know. Yeah. <laughs> just because you're a nice guy doesn't mean she has to like you. Kind yeah. of thing. It, it, or it, just because she's nice with you doesn't mean she's flirting. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Again, being polite. And being inviting and, again, diminishing a boundary with someone's very different. Consent's important, guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, and girls. Yeah, and girls. Yes. And girls. I've seen that I've seen that sword cut both ways. But uh, I, I think that not enough is said about understanding personal boundaries and understanding that, no, you're not the center of everyone's universe. You don't have to be. You're happy. To, this, this one person isn't going to make or break you know, your sense of self or sense of accomplishment or anything like that. There's no single situation uh, that is worth it to either, again, violate somebody's boundaries or to have your own boundaries violated. Um, So I think that was really, really important. Do you want to talk about uh, roommates while we're kind of on the topic? So being a subject matter expert on Texas Penal Code, um, Living situations, as far as uh, Juan has stayed in, in my house enough to, to be a resident in my house. Uh, there's a kind of a gray area. If somebody in the comments can come correct me if they have a specific number. Uh, I have never seen a clear cut, this is the amount of days or the amount of hours someone needs to be in your house. And if someone has free access to coming into your house, even if they're a random stranger off the street, they establish residency. It might be different in different states. Established residency means they're a roommate. It turns every single criminal offense like theft, uh, you know, burglary, all those things that are normally sometimes felonies and kicks them into nothing. Also, vice versa, again, he goes to hit me. If we're just That's buddies yeah. <laughs> and we hit each other, we're just fighting in public. He hits me as my roommate. People, At least in Texas, people have to go to jail. It, it gets very involved. If the neighbors call, it gets really crazy. Um, be, and the neighbors will call. And they will call. Even trust if it's us. nothing. They got nothing better to do. Even if trust it's nothing. Us. But it's a, uh, be very careful about who you allow to establish residency in your domicile. Uh, and again, that has to do with just simple stuff like, I'm not just going to let a random person come in and have access to things that are critical to my day-to-day activities, but it's also, I don't want to give somebody power over my living situation that I don't trust. Well, and also, let's just be real honest about it. Once you have a roommate... Very few things are still just yours. Yep. It's extremely hard to prove ownership of property mm-hmm. when you live with another person. And that, again, is something as simple as groceries. And you'll always see this. Anyone that's ever been in college and had roommates or had to live with that situation or deal with that situation, it's incredibly frustrating. Most people from the ages of 18 to 25 complain primarily, if it's not about college, or it's not about their crappy job. It's about their roommates. <laughs> Literally every 90s sitcom was them complaining about their roommates. <laughs> every single one. Uh, all of the drama in their life almost always surrounded and revolved around their roommates. Um, be very, very cognizant and careful of that. That also the same thing goes with, uh, you know, who you choose to date. Mm-hmm. Uh, who you choose to... And it's not saying, and again, we'll, we'll get into a relationship. We're going to make an entire different video specifically for that. Uh, but your your physical security begins and ends with the people who have the most access to you. Uh, in domestic uh, violence situations, again, literally, that's always going to be, it has to be your significant other or somebody that you have a relationship with. But you're talking about like even murders and things of that nature, almost always. I, you're talking probably in the 90th or 80th percentile, murders are committed by somebody you know or somebody that you're close to. It's like, oh, that's weird. There's no forced entry here. Yeah. 
just look at it. She's just like, oh, there was no fourth century. Yeah, the family did it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's it's a weird. You can't control that, and so like be really, really like I said, careful about who you allow in that space and and uh, when you're exploring the option of that. Uh, be very careful with that. Obviously, if you're a kid watching this video and you're stuck with your parents, I'm sorry, you're basically property. But <laughs> you literally can't legally go anywhere unless your parents know. Uh, you're just going to have to work on that, I'm sorry. Uh, but that's what your stoic mindset's for. Okay? Yeah. Wait till you're 18 and you can bounce or self emancipate at 15 in Texas at least. There you go. Yeah, hey man. You go do you. You take care of your own. You make your own stuff, oh my guy. Mm-hmm. I want to add something to that without going into like full dad mode. Because. Don't get me wrong, I used to like to uh, spend some nights at the bars and get a little wild and party, but there has to be at least one responsible person Always. in the party of the drunk folks, because <laughs> you can't all go out and get drunk and expect to have any level of security. Mm-hmm. You know, we can go to a certain bar in the town that we work Mm -hmm. and guarantee you that there are groups of adults that are so hammered they don't know where their cell phone is. They don't know where their wallet is. Usually they lose their significant other and then call the police to report a missing person. Yep. (laughs) Don't be that person. You will be vomiting and pooping on a curb in the middle of a major metropolitan city. Yeah. And the only person that can help you is a police officer. That's not where you want to be. No. So, never. That's never a good situation. It's just when for you're thinking involved. about personal security, there's nothing wrong with going and having fun, going out to the bars, having a drink, whatever mm-hmm. you like to do to spend your free time. Just do it with at least one responsible party. They can take care of you. They are your personal yeah, they security. Are, they are. They become, they, they they become your physical security. They take over your physical security. <laughs> Give it to them. And I would even say, and that kind of goes to my original point about kind of where you're placing it. Have have a network yeah. of people. You are not bulletproof. Yeah. You know, your your living situation isn't. If your living situation becomes unsafe or, or untenable, have a backup plan. I think it's brilliant. Uh, I keep a spare bedroom literally just for that. We're sitting in technically my spare bedroom. Yep. Just for that. Could be my bedroom someday. Maybe yeah. this is my backup plan. Yeah. yeah, here it is. But it's it's you want to, if you're in a position to do it, be ready to give that to the people that you care about, that you've already vetted and you guys are close friends, you trust each other. But also don't be too proud to take that. Don't stay in a toxic or bad situation just because, you know, you're too proud or whatever it is, you know. Um, have have some humility and, and go out and take yourself out of those situations uh, when you can because uh, the consequences for that are, are typically pretty bad, uh, pretty dire. Um, Somebody usually goes to jail. Yeah, pretty much always. Um Another big one, and, and we're going to do an entire simple video on this, but we kind of wanted to touch it on this, was uh, social media. Mm-hmm. And we're just going to call it the internet for now. And I'm going to stay pretty broad on this. Um, be careful what you put out there. Uh, stalking's a thing. Um, identity theft uh, is not a joke. Uh, <laughs> Jim. Jim. <laughs> um, uh, but even just simple stuff, you know, I, if you're you're – your ex can become a very dangerous thing for you. Um, your coworker that doesn't think that you, you know, you don't realize is secretly you're the center of their universe uh, is a thing. Your creepy neighbor down the street uh, can be a thing. That kid that you talked too much crap to on your online game who then so, calls in a swatting a call team. on your yeah. house. Yeah. Or worse, drives like five states away and shoots and kills you. Or worse, yeah. 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 I've seen I some was thinking bad stuff. like yeah. across the globe, but you're right, that has happened also. Yeah. So. It's, I've seen some crazy stuff. Um, I, I, I'm not saying you, obviously, we should live in a day and age where we can share things. It's kind of the beautiful part about mm-hmm. living in today is that we can kind of enjoy watching people that normally we wouldn't get a chance to keep tabs on. We get to watch their kids and we get to go see them get their new house. And we get to go enjoy their new purchases and kind of high five them and like and whatever. Heck, y'all are getting a piece of our lives here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, you know that can conversely uh, be used against you uh, in a lot of ways. Whether it's you know stealing your bank account information, do not give your driver's license information to a social your, media site. Do you not know? give your driver's license <laughs> pictures. Do not give your social security numbers to your yeah. social media yeah. sites. Remember that everything and anything that you give to these companies. Yeah. Can and will be probably accessed by a hacker at some point. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, that's that's just a good rule of thumb, and it was something that we grew up with, which for some yeah. reason everybody that taught us this has forgotten about. Yeah. Um, so all the parents and all the grandparents Do were better. like, yeah, <laughs> basically fully stranger danger. Hey, don't put your real name on the internet. Don't let anybody know. Don't let anybody. Don't post anything on there that you don't want <laughs> the entire world to know about. Now, now all these same people are out there posting every single detail about their lives, actively and constantly letting you know exactly where they are, what they're doing, how they're doing it. So. Don't put anything on the internet that you don't want people to see. Just assume at some point it will... Assume that anything you put on the internet will someday be on a billboard with your face next to it. Yeah. That is that is. The, I, would, I would say even if it's behind a paywall. Yes. Yep. Because there's been there's no plenty of instances it. already of... OnlyFans getting hacked mm. and people's private personal... Heck, heck yeah. Heck your your stuff bank coming out. <laughs> yeah, How many know? of the banks have been hacked? Well, that's Same what thing. I mean, yeah. like... Just because it's behind a paywall or you're paying to use a service. It does not well, mean you're safe. Yeah. Guess what? The stuff that you're posting isn't safe and now your bank account information isn't mm-hmm. safe. And we'll, we'll, we'll give a pretty good, we're going to do a thorough bullet pointed out. These are specific ones for specific yeah. reasons, but just. It, it, you have to be smart about what you're it, posting. It, if I'm posting my home address, the license plate, make and model of my vehicle, uh, when I'm going on my workouts. You were talking about run naps. Oh, yeah. And it's like so, a serial killer's dream. Yeah. It's going to just follow every fitness challenge yeah. that requires running. I track everything with my watch. And my watch tracks everywhere that I run if I'm doing an outdoor workout. Yeah. I don't post those maps for a reason. If I do post it for whatever reason, I white out the names of the streets. And then good luck finding it because it's just like green rectangles. It's just a little thing. I mean, yeah. you know. But if you run at the same place every day... Why are you going to broadcast that to the internet so someone can come find you, look at the times that you normally run, look at all the social media pictures of you in your workout clothes so they know exactly what you look like, and then find you on the dark part of the trail? And, and, and It just, you know, I, call I, us overcautious, yeah. but... I don't want to say this to freak anybody out or to stop them from saying, you know, if it didn't, do it for the gram. I think all of these things are really incredible, amazing things that... Well, we, we can't have say that. We yeah. post, yeah, yeah, yeah. We I, post I a saying, ridiculous it, amount it, of information. It, it, it's not that you shouldn't do it. You should just be very discerning about how you do it mm-hmm. and uh, control and, what information you're really putting out. And be aware of how that information can be used. Yeah. It's not don't not necessarily don't do it. It's be aware of how, where that information is going, what can happen to it, how it can affect you so you can be prepared. Because at some point, you know, your your nudes might be leaked online and you're not going to pretend to be shocked about it, you know? Yeah. You Wait, have to know... Your nudes got leaked online? Whoa. I mean... <laughs> can I get that? Only uh, Yeah, hold I'll, on. I'll right. send it to you later. Yeah. Anyway. Well, I can't up. believe you haven't... I, t- I told you about you know, the billboard. The billboard, you know? billboard yeah. I just anyway. mentioned the billboard. Anyway. You're right, you're right. No, but, you know, having... Being aware of, like, there are legal avenues of what you can do about, about yeah. all, all kinds of things, you know? There are ways that you can be prepared there are things you can have available on tap um to make sure that you can minimize the damage done to your personal life and to your person as well and the same thing with with your personal you know your physical safety you know change up your roots you know it's better for you mentally anyway to see new new things yeah and, you know do new routes you don't get as bored um very true but yeah just just be aware of how this information can be used so you know how to prepare for it and know how to stay safe, you know? Um, kind of on some of the last bullet points we're probably going to hit on, on physical security. Uh, part of this, and, and we're going to do on preparedness. or Preparedness. Preparedness. How, if we're still debating on how you say this word. Please, preparedness. Please in the it's comments correct us. Pre- pre- preparedness. It's preparedness. I think Josh is the only one yeah, who doesn't know. It's, it's preparedness. I, I, have, I have a disability. <laughs> um, uh there's mental and, and physical fitness, and this is a very broad term we're going to use. Uh, for now, I kind of what I want to say about mental fitness is understand your capacity for how you would. So, so let's say all of these things fail. My my, I picked a good spot. Uh, I've done a really good job of controlling what I'm putting on social media. I've I've done a good job of setting up ring cameras and all that stuff. But I have a highly motivated person that decides that I'm going to go be you know, a victim. They're going to victimize me for X, Y, Z. What are my realistic expectations for how I'm going to handle that? Am I super high speed, low drag X, you know, 
army ranger kind of guy that's got all this training and, and I work out five times a day, or am I somebody that's is normally never on my radar? I'm a desk jockey. I have never been, you know, emotionally stressed about something past, you know, uh, my what sports, I was my, yeah, for lunch. yeah, or my sports team disappointing me, or you know, you stuff like man. that. How about yeah. those Steelers? Fans? <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, I've been a Cowboys fan for twenty years, so I, I know everything about disappointment. So, uh, nice. um, kind of under. Uh, Understand these things so you can work on them, but also have realistic expectations for what your plan B is going to be. Well, and you, all you of should also says, yeah. think about it before yeah. it happens. Yep. Have a little, you know, what if game in your head, like, mm-hmm. oh, what if I did forget to lock my car? What could have happened? Yeah. Oh, someone could have taken all my stuff. Yeah. Or like, what if someone finds out where I live? How would I handle that? Yeah. What if my information gets out online? What am I going to do? The more you think about it before it happens, the more prepared you will be if, in fact, it does happen. And sometimes it's as simple as, like, I was joking about this with, with our cameras one time that, you know, Juan's above putting straps on his cameras because he says, you know, hey, I buy good gear, and they don't help me. They get in the way. Uh, and, and they do. Uh, and, and I don't trust myself with holding it for more than a couple of seconds. So the second I try to hold one, typically I throw that strap over my neck. I wouldn't emotionally survive dropping that camera knowing how much money we You will die being strangled yeah. by a camera strap. Uh, probably, one or the other. <laughs> That's uh, what you needs know. to be prepared for. But it, I don't have that problem. Yeah, but it, it's... I'm prepared for the financial. <laughs> exactly, there you go, there you go. Uh, but try to fortify yourself against what you know your weaknesses are. Um, you know, obviously you should never have to put... You shouldn't be looking to put yourself into stressful situations for funsies. Uh, unless it's in a nice, safe, controlled environment. Or unless it's working out. Yes, or something like that. But, but like, look at your deficiencies and be honest with yourself. You know, I, I'm not a terribly emotionally fit person, uh, either if I'm on a bad part of my life or whatever it is. Let me go ahead and invest in some of these physical safeties and securities so that I avoid any assets of that. Or, you know, I've reached nirvana and I can just go be somebody that just lives off the land and walks through life and whatever. So, hey. It works for you, man. If nothing, if you are a perfect stoic and literally nothing can shake you, you don't need all the stuff we're talking about. You don't well, need then, to worry about it. you wouldn't be a perfect stoic. No, you probably wouldn't be. That's yeah. not the stoic mindset. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, just just kind of be realistic about it and, and I think uh, uh, have some uh, self-critiques every single time that you approach these, these situations, these ideas, and try to approach it with a little bit of humility uh, and honesty with yourself that it's like, hey... Man, I post a lot on social media. Maybe I should be a little more careful about that. Or I'm financially irresponsible. I should probably either get insurance for all the stuff I'm buying because I can't, you know, I won't survive financially X, Y, Z happening or make better, you know, cost living situations, decisions. But um, I don't know. I think all that stuff's kind of important. A little bit. Juan, Uh, final thoughts? Yeah. Uh, Final thoughts. Uh, Secure that stoa, y'all. Mm hmm. I mean, just yeah, like we've been saying, just 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 do it. Be be more prepared. Be accepting of yourself and your flaws and your abilities, and uh, that'll help you have a, a much more secure stoa because you will know what weaknesses you need to fill and what tools you can use to fill them. Oh, I like that. I like mm, it. I came like up with that yeah. just now. Yeah. I think uh, just like the last video, we're just trying to give you all steps. This is never going to happen overnight. <laughs> This is not something that you're going to change tomorrow and feel comfortable with, uh, especially this one. Yeesh. This is something that you could work on your entire life. Yeah. Like, when you're driving your car, are you aware of the cars that are around you? Mm-hmm. You could work on that. Are you aware of the places that you're going and, like, how you're going to get there and then what that place looks like when you get there? You could work on that. Mm-hmm. Is your house like a flashing billboard for someone that wants to burglarize it? You could work on that. Mm-hmm. We're just giving you steps to try and help you increase your own physical security. But yeah, I, I kind of did what they said. I, I, all of this stuff is just simply food for thought. This is all something that you should revisit multiple times. I revisit this probably And it's weekly. our opinion. Yeah, that's a huge, huge, it huge. It's, it's opinionated. Asterix. I don't know how to make an asterisk with my hands. But, um, yeah, but, just uh, keep doing that. Yeah, 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 it'll, it'll, it'll work, work itself out. It? It'll work itself out. But uh, you, you just kinda, you know, keep working on yourselves uh, as we keep working on ourselves. 
Uh, we're still doing stoic strokes, or Gil's doing stoic strokes, and I'm doing my best to struggle behind. Almost 40,000. Um, and, uh, you know, look, we look forward to more conversations. I am not because I accept myself. <laughs> exactly. There you go. That's, that's, some, that's a risk I'm willing to take. Yes. There yes. it is. I have reached nirvana. <laughs> uh, or maybe but, I'm drunk. What's, what's <laughs> which, one? <laughs> which one is this? What's in this coffee? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, just keep working on yourselves. Uh, keep keep uh, enjoying this journey with us all. And uh, until next time. Stay stoic, bro. What they said. Yeah. <laughs> Stay broke, stoic. Stay broke, stoic.